Disclaimer, this video is not a reflection of my personal emotional and mental state, nor is it a reflection of my opinions that I hold about myself. Hello everyone, what's going on my friend? Welcome everyone, Somer del Piso in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> we know we're in the Bronx, I think, I, I think. Yes, for sure, we are in the Bronx this time, I think. Or maybe in Harlem, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, Somer del Piso here. I don't know, man. Um, I was thinking about a lot of things. I think the topic of this video that we're gonna go over is are people NPCs? Are people programs, essentially? Like they follow, a, they have a sort of set of if and <clears throat> for loops, you know, a whole bunch of them that sort of have them react in a specific way to every single stimuli and uh, physical, emotional, um, action in this universe. What we really underestimate when we're on this practice of semen retention is that I think that we don't really understand what we're doing energetically. I think we really don't understand what we're doing metaphysically to this reality, right? A lot of people are easily influenced. A lot of people are easily conditioned. And because of these, this, that situation with them, when you are someone with a lot of energy, you are sort of uh, acting as a malfunction to their programming, their conditioning, their ways of life. You see, people are, like I said, pre sort of pre-programmed pre to do a lot of things, to react to a lot of different stimuli, a lot of different actions of people of a similar energetic output. When you are coming in with a lot of condensed, saved, refined, amplified energy in a small space 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 <laughs> in a small space which is your auric field you are causing a lot of malfunctions to this world in more ways than you can even understand the books that talk about semen retention the religions that talk about it don't really do that this explanation justice we really don't understand how much on an energetic level we are affecting this world retainers fellow retainers on semen retention and as i always say I'm not talking to the people that are that have been on semen retention for two weeks, you know, three weeks, oh, you know, five days in. No, we are talking about people that have been on the semen retention practice two months, three months easily. You are carrying a lot of energy with you. Let's let's explain how this works. We're gonna go a little deep, right? We're gonna go inside the, the nooks and crannies, the crevices, 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 the crevices of this practice, guys. Now. In this world, I believe, personal opinion here, a lot of what we do, a lot of the decisions that are, that are, are carried out by individuals in this physical reality, in this whatever this is, is sort of manipulated by the color, the UV light that is shined upon this reality that is filtered through the atmosphere. In addition to that, a lot of our actions are also controlled and perpetuated and accelerated by the rays of the, of the moon depending on what phases the moon is at. Waxing gibbous, waning gibbous, and depending on where this, how the sun is shining uh, through the atmosphere at specific times. These all influence the, uh, our decisions. But Sombra has cracked something, right? When you're on this practice of semen retention, lads, right? You realize that a lot of what the, the actions of this world, you know, that happen outside of this world physically, by the sun, by the moon, the rays of the moon, you know, which is the sun basically shining around the moon. It doesn't affect you. It really doesn't. However, gentlemen, however, lads, it affects the people around you, which means that at any given point of time, specific time, specific days where the rays of the sun tend to shine a little more brightly in a specific ray, i.e. perhaps the, the ray of purple, is shining through a lot, which accelerates the actions of individuals of that purple vibration, of that purple frequency, which will elicit certain results. Meaning that on certain days, you're just gonna have horrible luck due to the energetic output from the forces that sort of govern this world and keep everything in, in, a, in its cycle. When you are on the practice of semen retention, when you are not on the practice of semen retention, Unfortunately, you're going to be affected by these, these, uh, these things, these, the sun, the moon, so on and so forth. What can be done about it? Absolutely nothing, other than hang out with like-minded individuals 
and just live your life. You're gonna end up doing that anyway when you're on this practice of semen retention because you end up just uh, manifesting your reality, your new reality, your subconscious. Watch the video that I posted on my channel much, much earlier. Semen retention and the manipulation of the subconscious, right? Which is in turn manipulates your reality. Let's recap. A lot of, there are a lot of energetic influences and actions that govern the actions of the people that are not on semen retention, that do not, are not vessels essentially for refined, unbridled energy, which is what semen retention does. You must tread softly, as Chris Tucker would put it, through this place, on, especially on days when individuals that are affected by these actions, you know, these uh, satellites, let's call them satellites. When people are, that are affected by these satellites, the sun and the moon, are more affected much more strongly than other days. I'll give you an example for, in my case. Days with numbers that I tend to, I don't act any differently on any day, you know, on any given day. No, it's just Sombra is Sombra, whether it be the 10th of the month or the 21st of the month. But I have noticed that on the 12th and on the 13th of, of months, people act very, very strange. Days that equate to 10 in the numerological sense. Um, people tend to act very, very weird towards me. It's like, it's very, very strange. They act like they, they don't see me on the street. And then they try to bump into me, but then I talk to someone else. You know, we have a conversation, but they see that in full measure. And then they try to do things to interrupt it, to make themselves seen or to just sort of interrupt the conversation. And this happens a lot on many, many days. Honestly, like I said, I've been five, six months into this practice, six months now into this practice on the streak. And I, the things that I've been witnessing, you will not believe. And I definitely have deduced that it is due to an amalgamation of factors, including the influences of the satellites that surround this planet and a lot of just the individuals that are in my space, in my direct vicinity as well, because I can't avoid them. I'm not like the king of England, so I'm not gonna be escorted in a escalate everywhere, <laughs> isolated from society. Um, a lot of the people that are within my vicinity are not on the practice of semen retention. And essentially which that, what that means is that they do not have a reservoir of refined, unbridled energy. So what can be done? I mean, live your life. Live your life, continue walking your path and make observations. It's not personal, although these attacks are that you will experience whilst on this, uh, on this practice. Um, but don't worry, it's, this, this world is temporary. These are just things that just happen. These are just the rules of this, this universe here and you just have to sort of respect it. It's better than getting angry at it and not having the strength to do anything about it. Which lends to a lot of the way that I, the reason why I act the way I do. It may seem that I'm not, I'm sort of, I joke around or I'm entertained by a lot of things, but it's only because I understand the rules of this world a lot very, very closely, much, much more closer than you guys can even imagine. I've experienced a lot of things in this world. I've, I've lived the life of debauchery. I have. I used to sleep with many, many women. I tried drugs because I believed that it was, it was the direct way to enlightenment. There's no way that I'd be able to not, you know, go to the, the, the higher realms if I, you know, if I kept taking drugs. And I've, um, you know, I've reached like rock bottoms in emotional states. I felt weak at times, many, many times. I felt overwhelmed by the reality of things. I was afraid to even express myself at certain times. But one thing that's always consistent with me is that I just never stopped trying to experience this place. I never stopped trying to explore this world, which is why, you know, of course, I have received a lot of vitriol I've received a lot of negativity in this place. I have. Even to this day, on the way up here, I felt so much negativity, you know? I, people try to cut me off, you know? They do a lot of these negative things. And I just smile because it's just, this is just the world we live in. This is due to my practice being very, very deep and steeped in this semen retention practice. The refinement and the assembly and the, uh, the gathering of this very, very powerful force. This is gonna continue to happen. So what I'm saying is that you cannot get angry at the individuals that cast this, this aggression towards you. It is only what they're reacting to because they are not initiated in the ways of trying to ascend. 
Well, that's all I have to say today, really. Like, comment, subscribe if you like that video. <laughs> it sounds so contrived. I sound like the guy, what was his name? Daniel Kaluuya from uh, the Black Mirror episode, uh, 15 Million Merits, right? It's like, he had the, the glass shard. And remember, if you saw the episode, he was really building up towards, like, really making a political statement about, you know, trying to free and liberate all those people that are in that facility continuously on those spinner bikes fueling the, the place and building up credits little, little by little in order to try to spend most of those credits that you would accumulate within like years on an up chance at fulfilling a dream. And he finally breaks the system-ish, but what they did, the judges of that show that he, tr that he broadcasted this political statement on, gave him an opportunity to make money and to escape his situation. I am not Daniel Kaluuya. I am not, I do not have the same financial opportunity, nor do I have the same wavering temperament, right? I'm in it for the long haul. So don't let this place get you down. It's a wonderful place. The design is good. The air smells nice, right? The this ground, it's it's hard, it's concrete. I, I won't phase through it. The rules are done so specifically that I can't be really uncomfortable in this world unless I choose to. Thanks a lot, dude. <laughs> This is fine. Whatever these, these people cast at you, it's, it's fine, man. It's fine. You're not going to die, right? And stay radiant. I'll see you guys in the next one.